First of all, um, thank you very much uh, to the organizers for inviting me. Um, I must say I'm neither Polish, I'm German, and I'm not Mexican, so I live in Colombia. So um, uh, one reason why I'm here is because um, recently I've been working on a problem which um, is related or is a prolongation of a part of um, my PhD thesis, which I made some years ago. And this was work um, which, um, well, in, in my uh, committee was uh, Sergei Zabczyk, and he invited me also at some point at IMPAN, and we had kind of quite some interesting discussions, and in some sense, this, um, this work is a prolongation in the spirit um, what we've been de doing there. So first of all, I'm going to talk about um, the first exit problem of some stochastic reaction diffusion equations driven by some multiplicative um, Levy noise. This means um, something which has heavy tail, and um, this means you, have, you don't have um, exponential moments in these kind of things. So first, I'm going to uh, give you some um, motiv general motivation. You have some dynamical system. Here, well, of course, could be F. Um, here we have some uh, deterministic system, um, and you perturb it by noise. And the question, of course, is um, if the noise um, has some intensity, which is um, sent to zero, um, what is the, um, uh, the asymptotic first exit times from a domain which includes some stable state? And the question is then, how is um, the exit time distributed, or at least the asymptotics of the exit times, and how is um, the first exit distribution um, given? How is it um, distributed? Of course, um, this is a very classical question um, for the case of um, um, for the Brownian case. So the situation is just for some uh, uh, folkloristic reasons. Um, uh, you have a gradient system, which is de uh, non-degenerate. You have some stable state, and you have a, um, an SDE, which is perturbed, um, which perturbs this dynamical system with some um, Levy process. And in the case of a Brownian motion, this is very well known. You have some uh, large deviation principle um, coming um, from the from the marginal, from the Chizelsky um, isomorphism, and then you have Schilder's theorem. And in the end, you have some uh, contraction principle which pushes forward um, the large deviation principle from the, um, from the driving noise, from the Brownian motion, um, to the dynamical system. This is, well, of course, this is something rather classical. And what you, in the end, get out is um, um, an, an asymptotics of a first exit time, which is exponential. You need um, some, you introduce some pseudo-potential um, given as some um, energy, um, and whenever this energy is finite, this means the height of the, the half of the height of the highest um, saddle point in this um, energy um, energy landscape gives you the exponential um, exponent there. And what you get out is an exponential growth of the expected uh, first exit time, and the exit distribution is concentrated um, uh, on the um, domain of, on the, on the boundary of the domain where you want to exit, and it's uh, concentrated on the domain, uh, narrower, more and more narrow, at the point where this um, deterministic, um, uh, well, where the energy minimizing um, trajectory just hits this kind of, this kind of boundary. So this is uh, something rather classical. Um, when you replace Brownian motion by something like um, an alpha-stable process, then, of course, you lose a lot of properties. First of all, you don't have um, any uh, continuous paths anymore, um, and you have jumps, and the distributions are, do not have any, um, well, they only have moments up to a certain order, given just by the um, index alpha, when you have alpha-stable noise. And um, the first work on this in this direction was by Peter Imkeller and Ilya Pavlukevich, um, where you, what, with this kind of methods, I must say, um, where you get out that the first exit times, they behave rather differently. They behave um, um, polynomially. They have, they have some constant which comes from the, which includes the knowledge of the domain in terms of the stable state and the Levy measure which you get there. And you have some asymptotics in epsilon which is um, a power, one over um, the um, uh, alpha power of the noise intensity. So 
I will talk about this later. I will just um, give you an introduction um, in, the, in the more in the context which I'm interested in, um, how you can understand these kind of results. Um, just for the history, then there was um, a paper by Ilya Pavlikevich in 2011 where he studied this kind of um, system uh, perturbed to multiplicative uh, noises. So first of all, you have Eton noise, you have Satonovich and canonical markers. This means you have jumps which um, um, evolve um, according to um, um, integral curves. And what you get out is that the first exit time actually um, it, um, the, first of all, the rate um, is the same for all of them, but the, um, the constant here um, does not. This is something very interesting um, because it measures the space just in a different way, but um, the asymptotics will be um, just the same. What is interesting there is if you have something exponential here, then this constant, the, uh, the energy barrier, in fact, divide different domains of attractions in an exponential scale. This is something which you don't have in this case because you can see that um, if you have constants divided by epsilon through some alpha, um, you have just um, proportionality of the scales. This means you don't have a, such a precise division of domains of attraction and um, this is something interesting because in some sense this corresponds to a very degenerate case in the, in the Gaussian in the Gaussian case. Okay, so then there was this work I was talking about. This was, um, in fact, um, part of my PhD thesis. So this was uh, the work um, on a reaction diffusion equation, the JV and Funt equation, um, where you have um, the same dynamical system, but you have here um, a spatial component and La the Laplacian. And you perturb this by um, infinite dimensional alpha stable noise um, on the same space as the state space. And what you get out are similar results, which I will just get out, what we'll, 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 we'll talk about. And in 2014, um, Ilya and I have been writing um, a paper about this kind of techniques. Um, and we just could relax the fact to have um, a stable state, but to replace the deterministic stable state by some, uh, something like, for example, a limit cycle, some deterministic attractor <laughs> with an invariant measure. And there we can could calculate the um, asymptotic um, distribution. And this asymptotic distribution, the exit distribution, is something which is in s interesting in the sense that it's um, not localized and non-degenerate. So you get really um, out a, a measure, a limiting measure. Um, in the case of the alpha stable um, measure, you have mu being the alpha stable measure itself. And I will just uh, give you um, a motivation and um, um, explanation for this kind of result. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is just a prolongation of these kind of um, questions. So I'm going to talk about um, an SPDE given by this dynamical system, perturbed in a multiplicative sense um, by some um, alpha stable or regularly varying um, Levy process. And the questions are, if you have some domain of attraction, and um, this means you have um, stable states and you have to reduce them a little bit in order to avoid some um, complicated dynamics. And then the question is, what is the asymptotic um, approximate first exit time from this kind of domains of attraction? And how can we understand this in terms of um, um, a model, a precise model to which these uh, um, uh, approximate first exit times converge to? And of course, the same thing for the exit locus. Um, the question is, uh, where do we exit? And is there also some kind of model which we can write down in, uh, explicitly? Well, um, the idea is to have these kind of models um, actually not only in law, but on the, on the same state space as the underlying driving noise. And in the end, um, you can also you derive some kind of metastability results. Well, so this is the overview of, of course, the motivation. Now the overview of the talk. I'm talking about, first of all, the deterministic dynamical system and more precise properties, then talking about the random perturbation, and then the main results and ideas how to understand and prove them. First of all, well, this, as announced, the uh, reaction diffusion equations we're looking at, um, we are on the um, interval zero, one, and um, you have some um, initial conditions, um, which just assume to be continuous, and we assume to have some um, a Dirichlet boundary condition, 
this is not so essential. You, the, this is just a model. You can um, adapt it um, to many things. And what we assume is we have some kind of dissipativity condition. This means um, for large values, um, the, um, the nonlinearity, in fact, is still dominated by the largest uh, Laplacian eigenvalue. It means you have some, um, some dissipativity in a finite time, you enter a large ball um, in, in the typical state space, which can be H1, for example. So, and questions, uh, well, properties um, or um, examples of this are, for example, um, the heat equation itself, so without this nonlinear term, the JP infant equation, and for example, some kind of uh, reaction diffusion equations with uh, a negative leading term of odd order. So, of course, th we're looking at this um, reaction diffusion equation in um, a certain space. So the space will be, as, as announced here, in um, H01. Um, well, I think everybody knows what this is. So the first, the, the subspace of L2 with um, weak derivatives. And um, it's known that the dynamic system is extremely regularizing. So we're far away from, um, uh, from systems as you were uh, um, looking at. This is very nice and very well behaved in comparison. <coughs> and um, we assume that we have, uh, well, this is a gradient system. And we assume that F is in some sense degenerate in order to have finitely many critical points, which are just the solution of, um, of the stationary equation. What is the Pardon? What is the uh, capital F is um, the antiderivative of, of F. So the good thing is that it's known in the deterministic dynamical system literature that um, for um, generic nonlinearities of this type, um, the stable states, uh, first of all, you have um, generically um, only finitely many of them, and they're hyperbolic. And um, well, this means um, you have um, uh, a clear separation of the spaces which are attracting and repulsing, and that the um, stable and unstable um, eigenvalues are transversal, so they're not aligned. So you don't have anything like homoclinics or something like this. And we define um, the domains of attraction, so there are finitely many of them, um, by d phi. So the state space is just um, split up in the domains of attraction, which are open, and the, um, the separatrix, which just um, is also regular, uh, which is piecewise C1. So the whole state space is divided up in uh, finitely many of those domains of attractions and something outside where you have some um, attraction in finite time. And, well, one of the interesting thing is that um, under the hyperbolicity and transversality conditions, you arrive at um, a result. If you reduce the, the domain of attraction um, in two senses, first of all, um, you, you reduce it that you stay away from the boundary, so at, at some, um, up to some um, epsilon, which will, be, will turn out to be the same epsilon of the small noise intensity, in fact. And here we have some u chi. u chi is um, the um, a, a sublevel set of the of the potential. So you have some positive invariant domain which is bounded, and um, so you have the a domain of attraction, and you just reduce it a little bit from the boundary, and you just cut it off for a very large values. And what you what you obtain then is first of all in finite time you arrive in a, in a ball where you can control the initial values. And then inside of this and the domain of attraction, which is also positive invariant, and this, well, this D1 is also positive invariant under the deterministic flow, um, you have that you arrive um, in, a, in a power of, um, well, in a, in a logarithmic time in epsilon close to a power of, um, uh, of the uh, stable state. What does it mean? This means um, if you want to arrive, for example, so you have a stable state, and if this is an H, you have a stable state, then first of all, we have here some the, uh, the iota, um, and we have just cut off the whole space by something like this, this is the separatrix, separatrix, and here this is u, u chi, then you arrive um, first of all, you arrive in a, in a ball, which is uniform in some sense, and then you have um, in a regime of um, 
due to the Mohs melt property of exponential attraction. This means arriving um, to some power of epsilon um, from this, from from the whole space, from this um, from this d one epsilon chi, um, is just something logarithmic in terms of epsilon. You have an exponential attraction, which means that the time to come close up to some epsilon there um, is just some logarithmic term up to some constant, okay, for some small values of epsilon. So this is something very crucial because it tells you that in logarithmic time, the deterministic system is very close to a determined state in space which you can um, identify. So, okay, so this is, these are the crucial properties of the deterministic system. And I now come to the um, case of the, of the uh, perturbation. Well, I think now we've seen several definitions of a Levy process. Um, okay, starting in zero, you have independent increments, um, they're stationary, right continuous, and they have cut like paths, and assuming continuity and probability. But this is, in fact, not uh, very important. The only thing is we have this um, Levy process in the state space H, in the same space as um, where we want to solve the deterministic uh, dynamical system. Of course, we have the levy kinchin representation with all the typical ingredients, and we have the Levy measure, of course, there should be some double bar there. And, okay, I think there's nothing more to say about. What is important in some sense is um, the, the Levy um, ether representation. You have um, a cube Brownian motion, and you have um, a repartition of the process in a compound Poisson process, the pure, pure jump part in a compound Poisson process with a positive intensity of waiting times. And you have um, a pure jump process with typically infinite intensity, for example, in the case of alpha stable noise, with bounded jumps. And bounded jumps, of course, means that um, you have um, at least exponential moments. You have something very strong. And the, the loss of regularity of the jumps is in the compound Poisson part. Okay, so you have, this means the, the pure jump part is um, separated in a way which um, allows for some um, favorable um, redistribution. And uh, the parameter which we will use for redistribution in terms of epsilon of um, some kind of perturbation will be this one here. So we have here uh, separating the jumps by well, small and large jumps. And um, the small jumps would be something by um, an, uh, component one here and here um, the jumps which are larger than one. And we will just vary this um, parameter in the SQL um, according to our needs in order to control the dynamics. So we look at, um, so we will, we're interested in multiplicative um, perturbations. So we have to assume something about this um, multiplicative factor. First of all, we assume some uh, Lipschitz conditions and some boundedness conditions. Well, that's basically it. And um, for the, in order to write down the mild solution, we have to introduce the heat semigroup according to the Laplace operator, the Dirichlet Laplace operator on this space. Well, so now we're looking, at, now we can say, write down at least um, the equation we're talking about, and we understand um, the solution of this as the mild solution uh, in this sense. So we have viscosity convolution um, with respect to um, the small jump part and the large jump part. So this uh, solution has, um, well, this equation has a almost unique solution, mild solution, and it satisfies the strong Markov property. And this will be something which will be very important. And this is also one of the limitations where you cannot go arbitrarily far because you need this kind of property. Well, so now the precise hypothesis I want to um, state is, first of all, we assume that we have some uh, deterministic equation with some F, which has this kind of growth condition and it has at least two stable states in order to look at, to discuss some um, first exit problem. We assume that we have some Levy measure, it's a pure jump process with some Levy measure, which is regularizing with some alpha. Alpha being positive, it's not necessarily um, an alpha stable process, it's something, it can have a tails which are much lighter. For example, um, we have some kind of tempered alpha stable um, and these kind of things. And the interesting thing is that you can write down um, the, um, the tails of the, um, of, the, uh, um, of the Levy measure as in terms of a limiting measure mu and some growth, which is um, some power of alpha, which in the case of alpha stable would be just L being one. L is a slowly varying function. In the case of alpha stable would be 
rightly one, and mu would be mu itself. In addition, we assume that we have this uh, growth condition in order to say something about um, the, the size of the jumps. And this will be, well, it, it will play some role. Okay, so the second thing we need, in fact, is um, a weight. So we assume, we look at some, um, some set u in uh, a ball, a measurable um, uh, set, and you look at all the increments in space which send you from some given point x with the multiplicative perturbation into u. Okay, so this is, is a very important concept. So in later on, we'll see that due to this very strong, um, um, this, this very strong um, dissipativity properties, um, the x will be something close to the stable state um, from where, in fact, um, jumps um, will be able to lead you um, out of um, some set u. Well, so, so this, are the, this is a set of all increments which sends you from the point x with the multiplicative um, factor, um, de of course depending on x, um, into the set mu. And mu being the limiting measure of the uh, regularly varying um, measure, a Libby measure, um, we define just some measure mu, of course depending on i, which is just the measure which uh, measures um, the weight of the increments sitting in a stable state and sending you to the set u. Okay, this is, so if you imagine that you have additive noise and you want to exit from, for example, you have, um, so you have this kind, of, uh, this kind of set here and you have some u here and you want, you're sitting on phi i and you want to see which kind of increments send you to there. And you're measuring, measuring the, the weight of these increments in terms of the limiting measure of the, well, of the, of the Levy measure, um, or in the case of alpha-stable processes of the alpha-stable measure itself. Of course, in order to exit, we need some weight to exit. Otherwise, otherwise we cannot exit. So we need some uh, positive mass of these increments to get out. And we want to avoid just to jump directly on the boundary. So this is something which you have to exclude. And then we can define um, the asymptotic rate, the asymptotic exit rate, it will be the following. It will be just um, one, over, um, one over epsilon of this, kind of, of this kind of set. So this is once again, here we're sitting on the stable state. We want to exit from di, this means entering the complement of um, di. And the one over epsilon comes from the prefactor um, of, the, of the noise. You have one over epsilon, is just the probability of such a jump. And due to the properties of mu, you can write down what this approximately is for a small epsilon. This is epsilon to the alpha. Here we have some uh, slowly varying function in terms of uh, L in one at, uh, at one over epsilon. And you have the limiting measure uh, mu i there. So okay, you have something which resembles something already in terms of what we know. Well, so, and this is now the first result. Under these assumptions, you have the deterministic system, you have the stochastic perturbation, you have the multiplicative type, and you have what is E. Of course, you have that you need some mass to go out. Um, then you have um, the following results. You have a family of exponentially distributed random variables, SI, which are just the model of the exit times. And they are defined on the same probability space as the driving noise, and this is something um, actually quite nice because you can just extract from the underlying noise the, um, the exit and it satisfies the following. You have that the exponential moment of the rate times the exit time minus this model um, can be controlled. This means um, we have um, the convergence. So if this is zero, of course, then we have one. This means for um, an, an error C positive and for any theta, um, we find some large cutoff um, and some gamma, well, gamma being here, such that if we start in a slightly reduced dom uh, domain of attraction, then the exit time um, uh, converges exponentially um, towards this kind of model. And this model um, has, just as we have seen here, the exponential distribution um, with uh, the exponential distribution on the same probability space. And this has, of course, consequences. This means all the moments are known, and you can write them down 
directly, so up to the third uh, small error. You can just de um, determine them as one over, essentially one over lambda i epsilon, this eps exit rate, and here it's just written down what this actually means. Okay, so this is the result. This means lambda, lambda um, epsilon times the exit time is exponentially distributed. This means, once again, tau um, is um, it distributed essentially like one, uh, one over uh, lambda epsilon. This means, once again, you have some uh, polynomial growth, or one over some uh, monomial in epsilon, depending on the alpha stable noise or the, the tail of the regularly varying measure um, you, you look at. Okay, so how can we understand this result? So the, the main idea is just to um, write down uh, decomposition of the driving noise. So you do this, you do this on the space um, H, and you divide up the, um, uh, you, you make a radial um, um, uh, decomposition in a spherical in a radial part, and what you divide up is the radial part into something which has large jumps and small jumps, and the large jumps are jumps which are larger than one over um, epsilon to the row, where rho is between zero and one. So this is important because a row being zero and one means that if you have epsilon times one over epsilon to the row tends to zero, this means the inference of the small um, jumps um, should tend to zero, at least in law, etc. And then you have the large jumps, which are composed of, of um, fewer and fewer jumps, because uh, fewer and fewer are included. And first of all, we have here the, uh, com uh, the Copper Poisson process of these large jumps. Here we have the arrival times, and um, the um, Poisson and jumps, they have the intensity uh, beta epsilon <coughs> to the minus rho. So this means just you look at the jumps which are larger than um, this threshold, and this means you're looking at jumps which are inside, um, inside the complement of the unit ball with this, this kind of radius. And once again, you can write down what this means in terms of the, um, in terms of the limiting measure. So once again, you have here some kind of um, rate, and this rate now depends on the uh, subdivision uh, in terms of rho. So this is epsilon um, to the rho. And the IIDs, D jumps are just the Levy measure conditioned to being of being outside, and this is just this kind of this kind of law. All right. So then you look at um, the difference of the Levy, uh, driving Levy pro uh, process minus the Compa Poisson part, and you have something which has bounded jumps, bounded jumps by one over epsilon to the row, and this means in particular that you have um, this kind of exponential moments. All right. Now. So the main um, idea to understand this kind of um, um, this phenomenon is we look at um, an equation which is driven um, by the same noise except for the large jumps. So this is driven only by m epsilon to the minus rho. So this is the, um, the uh, well, of course, here's the um, convolution missing, sorry. Um, you can write down uh, the, um, um, the mild solution. And we know that up to the first large jump time, so this is the first thing, the first time we can use this property, the large jumps come only at the arrival times which have positive intensity. This means up to this, we have that the original solution and the small jump solution are identical. And this means we can look at the solution, the original solution at the large jump time. And here, well, once again, the convolution is missing. Um, you can uh, write it down. And what you can see is that um, you can divide up um, the part um, until the large jump and the large jump itself. So this means you have here in the end the equation, which is just up there, and this is just y epsilon at t1. This means the large jump solution at t1 plus the first large jump which occurs. This means the solution increments are just uh, deformed um, large noise increments um, well, deformed by this multiplicative factor depending on y, t1, that means the small jump solution at the time of the large jump. Okay, so what else do we know? First of all, as we have seen, um, the deterministic solution um, uh, goes quickly to the um, stable state in the domain of attraction where we are. And now comes and um, since. So we have bounded jumps, so we can we can look at, uh, we can just bound, well here are the norms missing, for, sorry. So if we look at um, the 
the size of the jumps of y epsilon. These jumps are just given, as we have seen here, just by the jumps of this kind of noise. So they are not bigger than um, the, uh, the jumps of the, the, the multiplicative jumps um, of, this, um, of this type. So we know that this, is, um, um, this should be bounded. So we are um, on a bounded set. Being on a bounded set means that we, have, we can control this. And here we have um, epsilon times. And here we have the, um, the upper bound of the, small, uh, the, of, the small, of the driving small jump noise. So we have epsilon times um, epsilon to the row. And this tends to 0 as epsilon tends to 0. Okay, so this since is very, very heuristical, and you have quite to do some work in order to get over this. And maybe at the end of the talk, I can talk about uh, how to prove this. What we get out is that um, up to the first large jump time, the small noise perturbation and the deterministic uh, perturbation stay close on, on uh, with up to um, an exponential um, error. So the exponentially small error. So that means the, 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 this difference um, being larger than something which itself tends to 0 can be controlled um, in terms of an exponential of, of an exponential probability. And this is where all the, the work lies in. And this is something which um, in, in finite dimensions, what you do is you just use the, the strategy for one-dimensional noise, and then you use the dimensions. But of course, in infinite dimensions, you cannot do this, so you have to do something different. And this is something um, I did, but I will talk to this about <laughs> this a little bit later, maybe. So the next step in the, um, in the dynamics is that you look at when do the large jumps occur, and they occur at the time, one, well, expected times of 1 over beta epsilon. This means it's something which is growing polynomially. But on this time scale, we know that we have already um, returned to the stable state um, of the deterministic system. So the deterministic system is already close there. We are on this time scale close to the deterministic system. This means we have the following scenario. On 0 t1, on the f up to the first arrival time, there is no exit um, including the time t1, because we know that uh, the deviation from the deterministic system is very, uh, um, uh, very small. And if there is an exit on this interval, it will be in the endpoint. This means we have to look at the jump at the endpoint um, of this time interval. So we know that y epsilon t1 should be, well, first of all, writing it down, we have here the uh, deterministic system, which is already close to the stable state, plus the perturbation, which is also close, uh, which are close to each other. This means, in total, we are close to the um, stable state. This means, with very high probability, this means up to these kind of errors, which are exponentially small, we have that the first exit time is t1 if the large jump leads you out. OK. So now you can just transfer this by the uh, strong marker property from the, zero, from the interval 0 t1 to the interval ti, ti plus 1. So what we have here are the events bk. This means sitting on a stable state, it leads you out um, of the domain of attraction. This means um, the first exit time is essentially one of those arrival times where you get out for the first time. This means you are sent out by the increment um, of the domain of attraction as long as you haven't been sent out before. So you can write it down. This means this is T1. And here we have uh, the intersection of uh, BI. And here we have um, the non-exit um, the non -exit or the non-success events of exiting here. And this is just um, as we have written down here, um, TI. And here we have this kind of product. And you can already smell the um, the geometric structure of this, you see that you have trials to get out until the first one just um, gives you the exit. So what you get, here we have, let's just repeat, the, um, the exit rate. We can, therefore, this is, um, of course, a heuristic calculation just to see how it, how it works. Here we write down um, the, um, the, um, um, the Laplace transform of uh, the rate times um, tau x. So we know this should be one of the first, um, one of the arrival times um, under these kind of constraints. And then you just calculate what this actually means. The arrival time is just um, the sum of the independent waiting times 
the BIs are the jumps of the, of the noise which are independent. So you can write down the geometric series and you get approximately um, this kind of term. Well, just having in mind, keeping in mind what this actually was, this was just um, the exit rate divided by beta epsilon. And here we have the um, um, Laplace transform of lambda epsilon times the arrival, first arrival time. We get this kind of term. And when you just plug everything in, you see everything cancels out and you get one over theta plus one. This is the Laplace transform of an exponential distribution. So this is, so this is of course, the, the story of the large jump dynamics. And of course, um, the main work lies in the small jump dynamics. Okay, so this is something we had. So this means we have a natural model which gives you um, the, um, the first exit time. And this would be just the arrival times um, of the large jumps. Well, on this, um, with this um, geometric mixture. And okay, and we can just calculate this and you see this is exponential distribution, almost the same, uh, essentially the same calculations. So I hope this is an idea how to see where these kind of um, results come from. Um, talking about the exit locus, you have something um, which is um, in some sense um, not so different from this. You have, um, we're just looking at, at which of the large jumps you exit and it's once again it's some kind of um, geometric distribution. So you have the large jumps here. And what you're doing is you have some independent geometric mixing of these kind of large jumps. So you have some uh, geometrically distributed random variables. Interestingly, um, these, this kind of model, so the first, talking about um, the first exit time, talking about, here we are. Um, here we have the S. And the S is just exponentially distributed um, with time one. It does not depend on anything of... Um, the method for the model of the exit locus, you have, uh, there is some hidden, um, um, well, the hidden parameter, and it's the parameter um, rho. So here we have the BKs, and the BKs are um, the exit of uh, large jumps, and you have to just say what is a large jump and a small jump. So here we have a result which is less, let's say, universal in this sense. But nevertheless, the most important thing is that um, this independent mixing um, gives you always um, the same uh, distribution. And this distribution was just given in terms of um, this um, limiting measure M, which was just the limiting measure mu of the, um, of the increments which leave you out from the uh, domain of attraction. It means you can understand this as the limiting measure conditioned on being outside. So what you get is the, um, well, first of all, here we prove the uh, convergence or the, the finiteness of the um, alpha, of the difference of the um, alpha's moment for some alpha prime, which is between zero and alpha, which just means we have um, not only convergence in law, but convergence in LP to this kind of um, precise model. And of course, this implies the convergence um, in distribution. All right, so the results we have there, first of all, we have that um, the renormalized first exit times uh, converge to something which is exponentially, and it's um, one over epsilon to the alpha. We can construct this explicitly on the same probability space. We have this um, convergence of exponential moments. Um, and the first exit locus is known to be on this, um, uh, in terms of given in terms of the limiting measure. Um, and we can construct um, a, a model, W epsilon, epsilon, which converges to the, well, well, well such that the original um, first exit locus converges to this kind of model um, in alpha in L alpha prime for some alpha, uh, alpha prime between zero and alpha. So this is the best thing actually you can get. Otherwise, you don't have um, these kind of moments. So uh, large jumps um, are determined, so the, 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 the moments of the large jumps are determined by the index and there's nothing better than um, um, moments up to order some alpha prime, which is less than alpha. Okay, so just these are the, the things um, uh, we've been doing. Um, they are, in some sense, um, optimal. You get um, um, exponential convergence. You can see that um, this is for some, well, this is for some exponents um, theta, which are between zero and one. For theta being one, these moments, these uh, uh, objects still don't, ex don't exist anymore. And we can also infer some kind of metastability results in the sense that if you look at the uh, original uh, solution and you divide it by epsilon to the alpha, this means you're uh, speeding up your um, process. What you, get, uh, what you get is some kind of um, 
because we know that all the exit times from different domains of attraction are proportional, then you can just renormalize it by the same um, rate and you get some probabilities of transitions between the different domains of attraction. And this leads to the convergence towards some Markov chain um, sitting on the stable state. I think that's it. Um, muchas gracias y bien cuidado.